Hi and welcome to tutorial 90 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not familiar with our website, it is M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X, markplex.com, and there you will find 89 other tutorials and 50 programs. And if you become a Gold Pass member, there's a whole lot more information available there. So uh, when I created program 50, I used the vector and I thought it would be useful just to demonstrate a simple usage of this, perhaps something that you could use. Uh, so first of all, what is the vector? Well, if you're unsure of that, a good place to go to is the EL object reference, and you'll see uh, a explanation of that along with its properties and methods and other interesting pieces of information. But what it is essentially is a collection of data elements referenced by an index which is zero, zero base. So in other words, you start with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however big your vector is. Now, one of the nice things about the vector is that when we add an element to it, it pushes all the other elements down automatically. And uh, the thing that's not quite the same as, say, an array, though, which is uh, quite significant, is that what you cannot do is go back and say, I want to know what the element of a certain vector was uh, for that vector as it was five bars ago or three bars ago or whatever. You can't, it doesn't keep an, an historic record of itself like you would have, say, with an array. Okay, so let's create a simple example and if you notice back here under the vector class under EL object reference it tells us that the namespace is EL system collections so we're gonna use that in our program to start with and we do that using the using command and if we don't do that when we try and do things with vectors in a few moments we would get an error so we're gonna create in our variables we're gonna declare a vector and I'm just going to call it vect, V-E-C-T, and its initial value is null. Incidentally, I'm going to make this program, uh, it's not really worth charging anything to download, but I will make it available to Gold Pass members to copy and paste. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste it as we go along. I think it's fairly straightforward. So we need to instantiate our vector. I'm going to do that in a once begin statement. So we're just going to say once vect equals new vector, like so. And I'm just going to be using some print statements. So I'm just going to clear the print log so that we can see what we're getting there. Okay, so created our vector. Now what we want to do, and this is a really simple example as I mentioned, but what we're going to do is store the bar number into our vector. We're going to do that using vect dot insert and we're going to insert it at the element index equal to zero and we're going to put in a bar number like so now having done that we want to see what we're getting in our program so we're going to create a print statement so we're going to do print date time and the first thing we want to know is how big is the vector so I'm going to put in vect dot and the uh, keyword here is vect count this is actually a literal so I'm just going to put vect dot count like so also going to show what the bar number is for a particular bar so put that in quotes and then we actually provide the actual keyword for bar number and then what we want to know is what the value is at the index equal to zero, which is the value that we've just uh, put in. So I'm going to do that by saying vect dot at zero. And I need to repeat that vect dot at zero. And something here that you need to remember, or you may get some errors, is to do as type int like so okay so I think that's probably all we need for the moment put a single quote in there need to make that a double quote and I think we're good so I'm just going to verify that this is already applied to a chart and 
you'll see here this chart has quite a few bars on it. So what you'll notice here is that the count of the vector gets bigger and bigger and bigger every single bar. You'll see we've got a vector count of 81,138. Now, having such a large vector may not necessarily be such a good idea because this is taking up resources from your computer and from your memory and so forth. Um, incidentally, notice also, as we would expect, that the bar number 81138 and then the value stored in the uh, zero index position is 81138. If we were just to modify the statement a little bit, so we could just copy and paste this. And so now I'm going to make this one. Now, what we're probably going to get here is an error because we're asking it to tell us what the value is in element one. Now, on the very first bar that this is applied, it's going to insert the value into element zero, but there is not going to be anything in value one. So I'm going to try verifying this. And you'll see, as I mentioned, we get an error. It says vector is empty or invalid index. And you'll probably see that sort of message quite a bit as you experiment with vectors, but it's quite easy to, to uh, guard against. And all we need to do is say if vect dot count and in this case let's just say is greater than one then in fact we need to yeah greater than one should be fine so let's just verify that and go back to the chart format analysis techniques let's switch the program back on okay so we're not getting the error now the program is just clunking through all these uh, tens of thousands of bars and what you'll see is that as we expected in the zero element we've got the current bar number and in the the one element we've got the bar number before that okay so that's great um, we've got a really large vector but as I say we probably want to guard against that and make sure that we keep our vector down to a manageable manageable size for various reasons so the way we can do that is we can do something like this we can say if vect dot count and then we can just set up whatever number however big we want our vector to be is greater than 10 then and uh, what we're going to do is this thing called vect dot pop underscore back round brackets and that is going to remove the element at the end of the collection so in other words we're going to keep our um, size of vector down in this case to uh, 11 because it would be uh, 0 to 10 and then when the count got to 11 we would remove the last element so let's verify that and let's now have a look at our print statement again and you'll see now that however big however big the bar number is our vector count is equal to 10 and uh, if we were to go back and look at the last several um, values, we would obviously only have the last uh, 10 or actually 11 stored in the vector. So let's just try that out. Let's go to our statement and we're going to make this vector count has got to be greater than 10. And we're then going to modify here. Instead of vector at 1, we're going to say vector at 10. So verify that. Go back to the chart. Okay, now we're not getting anything here now. And the reason for that is that we're maintaining our um, vector at a size of 10. And therefore, it's never going to get to that 11 size. So what I'm going to do is just change that to 9. change this to 9 and verify and then we're going to see the values there as we expected and uh, the value at vector 9 is obviously 9 elements before this one here and we still got the vector size vector count of 10 which uh, 
gives us elements at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so I hope uh, you find this useful. Thank you.